And do you have these on your website? Can people get no, this? No, uh, Tony Chatterin, if you go mm -hmm. in and buy a uh, Tony Chatterin injection, mm -hmm. you'll get one of those with every one. But we didn't use Tony Chatterin injection. Okay, here's what this. Here's another one. I, I bought two for a television show and I've still got the two. All right, now this is one that involved a commercial product that, that Daryl had. What was the name of that product that you uh, had? Sweet Smoke Q. Okay, Sweet Smoke Q. And then he used a little bit of Dale's and a little bit of apple juice. And a little bit of liquid smoke. Okay, there we go. Here's what I'm going to tell you to do if you don't have these specialized barbecue products at your house. A little bit of beef base. You can buy it in a regular grocery store. Um, Nors makes an excellent product. Hit that. Use about a cup. Hit that with a couple of shots of Worcestershire sauce, a few drops of liquid smoke, and about half a cup of apple juice. You are good to go. If you want to add some Dales, just a little bit of Dales on top, that's incredible for flavor, but you don't have to. And matter of fact, for the home cook, as far as the injecting goes, I'm gonna say it's wonderful, you will have an excellent product, but don't feel like you have to run out and buy specialized equipment. Only reason I'm doing it is because it was already sitting here in front of me, okay? Plus, I'm gonna show you how, how to do it, how to actually do it. Because that is one scary looking thing. It is. You gotta see this thing he's got in the other, bar, his, bar, he's got a barbecue room. It's got like 19 needles on it. It looks like you're going to take part in Spanish Inquisition is what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, look at that thing. Charles Power injected it. You can buy it on Barbecue Superstar. <laughs> boom, bang, boom, bang, boom. Next thing you know, it's all in. That thing's got a pump on it. Like you go out and you spray your flowers in the yard. It's awesome. All right, so again, the striations of the meat go this way, okay? And you want to... There, and Daryl was talking earlier on his video, there's arguments about going with the grain or against the grain. I'm going with the grain and I'm keeping it really simple because we've got flavor happening in this thing a thousand ways to Sunday. Now, when you're injecting, and this is something I've noticed. Good Lord, you're, you're actually pulling the, it's like you, you're doing it so pro you can't even tell you're working that. <laughs> well, there's two ways to do it. Go look at the way Daryl did it How because you have? No. I have eight. <laughs> So if you inject it, you go, and it goes, and it goes everywhere. And I'm wearing a lot of marinade from, from yes. what Daryl did earlier. I know. Watch this, though, guys. Let me show you a trick. Because we're going, remember, we're going with the grain on this. All right, if you put it in there and you're going pretty deep, put your hand on top here and use your other hand to slowly inject. You can feel with your fingers that meat plumping up under there. See? You can tell. And of course, you're going to lose a little bit as, as, it, as you pull that uh, needle out. But if you use your hand to feel, you can tell how much is in there. You can tell when you're about to make a mistake. When you're about to get a shower. Actually, you know what, though? If you're going to smell like something, there's a lot worse things you could smell like. <laughs> than a really good barbecue injection. I've, you know what? I've thought for years, if somebody was going to make, if, if I could have my own line of cologne, you know what I want? I want roasted garlic, and I want rosemary. Oh, there. Finally got one. <clears throat> I think that's some of the fine. And I did actually buy my daughter some cologne for Christmas, and the flavor, or the flavor, the scent was paperback book. And it does. It smells like paperback books. All right, so now I'm getting messy. You know what? That doesn't want to go in there. I've hit a cartilage, not cartilage. Um, oh, fat. Yep, I've got a fat nodule. You can still watch it, and you can actually see the meat plump up as you're injecting. And if you get too much resistance, chances are you've hit a little bit of fat. You've hit one of those lumps in there. Because here's the thing about beef, or chicken, or turkey, or whatever. As you work with it and as you learn how to do the cut work and the knife work yourself, you'll realize that <clears throat> there's, of course, every animal is built the same way, but because it's actually an animal, they're not exactly the same. You're going to have differences all over the place. All right, so I think that's about all we're going to do for the injection. And I'm getting both the flat and the point. It's a good measure because I have it. Can you see that? Can you see that plump up like that? Yeah. There we go. Man, you did a good job. 
We were also talking a few minutes ago about how when you do have an injection, if you choose to use it, it's almost like you're brining the meat from the inside out. And if y'all have watched any of my videos, you know I am a huge aficionado of brines. I think for the home cook, it's one of those things that can take you from being a really good cook to an incredible cook. So with an injection, I normally don't bother, but I do have to say, and this is one of the things I've kind of picked up this weekend and I may get me an injector <laughs> on the way home. You are using the salt that is in the injection liquid to almost brine from the inside out. Salt is one of those things that will help open up the cells, each individual cell, and the salt will enter into each cell in the muscle fiber and it will take the other flavors with it. It also prevents the meat from drying out. So you kind of got a win-win. So injection is one of those things that, from the most part, I'm, as a home cook and I got kids hungry and I'm in a hurry, I may not mess with. But if I am gonna barbecue or produce something that I'm gonna feed to my friends, I might take the time to do it for special occasions. I think that, again, it's one of those things that's gonna turn you from an excellent barbecue or backyard barbecuer to somebody that's got something kind of special going on.